Hello my friends, it's Gene from Regular Guy Mountain Biking. Thanks so much for tuning in. It is officially time to get this bike build started. So the first part that we're going to be installing on, on this Diamondback is going to be the new fork. Now there's some very important things you need to get right when upgrading your fork. So stay tuned and I'll be right back and we'll start going through each thing one by one to make sure you pick the right fork before you go and do this upgrade. All right, folks, once again, Gene from Regular Guy Mountain Biking, thanks so much for tuning in. Now, before we actually get into this upgrade, if you'd like to take a look at all the different parts and tools that I'm using for this upgrade, you can take a look at them with the link in the description. I've got a link, it takes you to a kit. You can take a look at all the different pieces, and in this video, we're gonna work on the fork. So as I mentioned earlier in the intro, we're gonna cover some very important things you have to get right when looking to upgrade your fork. The first thing we're gonna talk about is uh, what type of fork when it comes to the actual um, tube right here, okay? Which fork you get. There are different types of steerer tubes on a frame. There's tapered and non-tapered. Tapered has a wider base, a wider base, and it tapers to a smaller diameter uh, when it gets to the top, okay, it's, it's called tapered. It starts big, tapers small. This particular bike does not have a tapered um, steerer tube. It's just, you know, one size, top and bottom. So you gotta get that right. You cannot put one on the other. So make sure you get that right. Next thing you wanna get right is the type of wheel that you're gonna put on this fork. This particular fork will work with quick release uh, with a quick release hub um, you know, system on the wheel. A lot of front wheels now have through axles. This bike does not. This bike has quick release. Make sure you get that right, okay? Again, um, not that easy to interchange. There are different kits here and there, but for the most part, you really should get this right, okay? So make sure that you choose the right um, fork to fit the wheel that you have. Next thing you wanna get right is the actual uh, length of the, of the fork, the travel. The reason why this is important is because if uh, each frame generally has a geometry uh, designed to handle a particular length fork. If the fork is too short, or the fork is too, or the, if the travel is too short, right, this, this is not long enough, or this is too long, the actual frame will sit, um, well, I don't want to say incorrectly, it won't feel right. The frame is generally designed for a certain size fork, a range, a range, but it's designed for a certain spec. So you need to get at least pretty darn close. So when you're buying the fork, you want to make sure that the fork will be the right type of fork, at least travel-wise, of course, for the frame that it's going to be going on. Lastly, you want to make sure that the fork has the right brake bosses for the brakes that you have. All right, I uh, gotta tell you, most bikes nowadays are gonna have disc brakes, but I can't guarantee that yours will definitely have disc brakes. So make sure that the fork is designed to have the bosses on for the particular style brakes that you have for your bike. All right, so now that we covered all the important things you should know about before you go and buy a fork, if you ever have any questions or concerns, just consult your local bike shop. That's actually how I came about getting this particular fork. I talked to Sussex Bike Shop, I talked to my buddy Jason, I said, Jason, this is the bike I have, I'm trying to find a fork. And honestly, to find a fork with this particular type tube and quick release that was actually a decent fork was a little harder than I thought it was gonna be, but Jason found it in, in no time and it was a big help. So if you have any questions, it's better to do it right and talk to your local bike shop. That's everything I wanted to cover before the install. Now I'm gonna go and get this installed on the bike now. I'll do some video clips and, and get this going, but I have a detailed video on how to install a fork on your mountain bike. So if you'd like to learn exactly how to do the, the, the whole procedure, I've got a link to it over my head and you can take a look at that. So in the meantime, I've got some work to do, so I better get going.
right, folks, that's gonna take care of the install of the fork. Man, when I took this thing off, I can't believe how heavy this thing is. And like I said, it really was just a pogo stick. There's no controls on it. The most you have are these two preloads on, on the springs that are in this in, inside the, uh, the legs. Just, just not really the fork you wanna have on the bike. Remember, if you watched the first video, you'll remember me kind of going down the hill and getting hit hard. There was no real, real love with that fork for the rider whatsoever. This one should be a great upgrade. I'm looking forward to doing some riding with this new fork. So do me a favor, my friends. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe to the channel and click the little alert bell so you'll know about all the new videos that I'm coming out with little by little as I upgrade the rest of this bike. In the meantime, keep the party on the pedals. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.